Hi there. I decided to do one more video tonight. Um, just because I was doing a lot of other kids' books t just now. And, oh god. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. It's a little after midnight here. So. Um, and that is E.B. White's. Because he is one of my favorite childhood authors. Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little. Charlotte's Web. Stuart Little. I got these books because I was watching Mrs. Doubtfire. And she was talking about Stuart Little. One of the most great characters in children's literature. Or something like that was what she said. And... I had a copy of Charlotte's Web already because I love Charlotte's Web. I can watch the movie to it and I cry like a baby every time. What are you going to do? Um, Stuart Little, I found, was completely different than the movie. Um, there's only certain things that are the same. Uh, the concepts are great. I think that these books should sit next to the shelf next to your James and the Giant Peach and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And that's where they sit on my shelf. They sit varily colors along with the Indian in the cupboard. I like having them all together so that I know what's, you know, going to be next on my sons to reading list. Um, I think that every parent should own a copy because I think they have great moral values, which is seriously lacking in today's society. So, you know, turn to some of the older books. Clifford's great for teaching moral values. Um, E.B. White, um, Indian in the Cupboard. Um, Indian in the Cupboard, it's a good one about teaching kids that, you know, there is consequences for wanting, oh, let's say, a new puppy. Because, as we know, the character tries to take care of, you know, the Indian, and he finds out that it's a lot harder than what he thought. But he has to stick to it because it's a living person, and he, that's what he says. It's a person you can't use people. Um, Stuart Little and the Charlotte's Web, they teach good morals on friendship and promises made and kept. And I think that they're very moral books. I think they're very moral based books. Um, Stuart is a little bit more adventurous than Charlotte's Web. But I think that they're both really good. I would read Charlotte's Web first to your kids and then Stuart Little. Because Stuart Little jumps around a little bit and Charlotte's Web always takes place in the barn. Um, and just because of their places, you know, that's that's what I would do. Um, but I think that they're excellent books all the way around for children. Um, so, get them for your kids, you know, especially if your kids are, like, close to, like, the age of, like, five or six or seven. I would definitely get them Charlotte's Web. Oops. Charlotte's Web. And then get them Stuart Little. And read them to them, because reading to your kids is never a bad thing. And that's, honestly, my son would rather have a book than a toy any day, because he knows mommy's not fun. Mommy's too serious. But when mommy reads, mommy makes funny voices like this. <laughs> yeah, I think his actual favorite one is when I do an impression of a goose <laughs> in the biscuit books, because it goes, honk. And I actually make the noises, so that's another way to get kids involved into reading. And make up voices for all the characters, you know. If you're, you know. And he likes, he likes it when I make, like, let's say, okay, like in Stuart Little, the character's small. So I may do, like, a little voice like this for Stuart. And then Charlotte's Web, I think Charlotte is just sophisticated. So make a little Charlotte voice like I'm Charlotte A. Kabatica. <laughs> you know? Make voices to read to your kids because books are important now more than ever because kids are expected to know so much before they even go into kindergarten. So, 
read to your kids and buy them these books because I highly recommend them and they're really good books even if they are a bit old and dated.